Um, my name is Inga Dinat. I am a researcher for the University of Milano Bicocca's Mare Center in collaboration with San Hotel Hospitality Group. So um, I would like to follow up on the presentation from my colleague that we have just heard um, by providing some active and practical insights into coral reef restoration and the assessment of the different challenges, techniques, and opportunities that we have. So therefore, um, just allow me to give you a brief introduction. Coral reef restoration is an accelerating science. There's more and more techniques coming out. We're hearing about new approaches, uh, more projects all around the world. Uh, and this is because we all know that our reefs are under increasing threat. Now, until now, for the Maldives, there's very little regional information and peer-reviewed literature available for restoration practitioners um, to go by. So um, what we typically see or have seen until recently is mainly the tourism-based type of resort restoration style, uh, usually in the form of core frame, which is a great tool, uh, especially for communicating the urgency of the matter and for educating guests um, alike. So uh, while this is great in terms of reaching socioeconomic uh, targets for coral reef restoration, if you are faced with the challenge of restoring, let's say, an entire house reef, uh, you might find some limitations. So therefore, we ask the question, how can we scale up these restoration efforts with the um, tools that we have on site? So one of the um, techniques that has been applied uh, in many other locations around the world um, is coral gardening. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with this concept, it's a two-step process where, first of all, uh, you rear large numbers of usually asexually uh, fragmented coral fragments uh, in a nursery setting for about a year or so until they are large enough to be outplanted to the restoration cycle. Now, obviously, you're going to encounter some challenges along the way, so this is what I like to uh, talk a little bit about now and in the following slides. Uh, and eventually, you want to reach the goal of restoring your house reef, so outplanting um, these corals to the real environment. Now, in the work that we've been doing, we mainly focus on midwater coral nurseries because they have a number of advantages um, because you can grow corals under uh, very good light and water flow conditions while getting rid of some of the issues such as sedimentation or predation, for example. It's also a fairly low cost and easy to apply method because um, it doesn't require um, specific scientific equipment. Uh, it's fairly low cost and uh, easy accessible material that you should be using. On the downside, you may uh, think, however, that there are some costs as well, particularly when it comes to monitoring and maintaining maintenance and putting some effort into that. So the research aims of our project were clear. Uh, we wanted to test this methodology regionally and provide some benchmarks uh, for others to um, see if this is worth the effort or not. So eventually, um, assessing the effectiveness and the, the risks associated with this method. This all should help to provide some baseline uh, information and best practice guidance for the restoration practitioners here in the Maldives uh, who don't necessarily have all the tools uh, and scientific um, background in order to conduct all this research themselves. So the study design we used was, uh, we were using six different midwater nurseries of three different designs, uh, which were stocked with thousands of acropora, fossilophora, and variety of fragments. And we used the common monitoring protocol that you just heard about uh, in order to assess um, the effectiveness of our uh, coral rearing program across atolls, but also across habitats within an island. So the graphic on the right-hand side will show you on the bottom uh, one of our study sites at Magudu Island, uh, where Mara Center is based. And also uh, in the middle, we have Diamond Atuluga, uh, where we compared uh, the lagoon nursery uh, with the uh, reef nursery right next to it. Uh, these are the two designs that we use. So the top one, you can see it's a classic uh, lagoon nursery design uh, using rope anchors to the bottom 
and uh, some PVC pipes. We adjusted this design slightly to make it work in the reef as well, because not every uh, island might have a suitable lagoon. So therefore, uh, we streamlined the design a little bit uh, with corals being able to grow at different depths across the nursery. So we used Acropora and Pocopora fragments for direct comparison, and we used fragments with the same uh, genotype as well as size distribution to compare like with like. So here just quickly some of the key findings that we had. Overall, all of fragments had really high survival, more than 90% uh, across uh, study groups after one year. However, we did find some differences in um, health and growth between the site and between farming habitats. So for example, if you look on the uh, picture on the right, um, the dark bars, these are uh, growth of Acropora muricata um, in our lagoon nursery in Magudu. Uh, and the same uh, species growing in Ashuruga. So already from this graph, you can see that there's big regional differences in success. We also tried varieties, and I cannot recommend it because uh, survival was significantly lower and uh, it was impacted in both assholes uh, by a filler vegetation, which is a small nudibranch. So um, not a suitable candidate for this type of restoration. We also looked at comparison between habitats, and we found that overall lagoon nurseries are um, or have more mutualistic fauna and less fish predation, so these are key characteristics. But uh, at least for our studies, they were also more prone to diseases. Um, on the other hand, um, Poplopora varicosa um, uh, survived significantly better in the lagoon than it did on the reef. So you can see that by the bottom graph, the yellow. Uh, but these are the Postopora growth for our study. In contrast, the reef nursery, uh, we did have additional rearing space at depth, so uh, you get more for your money if you like. Uh, however, you do have to sacrifice coral growth a little bit for that as you go deeper. These are the uh, different shades of blue uh, in the graph. Um, overall, Acropora did a lot better in our study in the reef than it did in the lagoon. Um, surviving and growing significantly faster, and that is the um, green bar on the graph. An additional finding was that smaller fragments do grow a little bit better and faster. So um, from our uh, research, we found that anywhere in the range between three and five centimeters is a good starting point for stocking these kind of nurseries. So if this was all a little bit too much information, I'd like to uh, reference to uh, papers that were published as a result of this, so you can have a bit more in-depth look into this um, if you like. Of course, when you do restoration, there's always challenges, one of them being disease. And uh, diseases are an increasing problem for coral reefs around the world, and they are also potential risks to reef restoration, especially when you are working with a lot of asexually uh, fragmented um, corals, and you do have already, by nature, a lower uh, genetic diversity. So we wanted to see um, how big that risk actually is and quantify it by allowing disease to spread in the nursery, which is kind of a painful experience if you're watching your corals die. Uh, but nevertheless, we did it for science, and we found that um, only Postopora in our stocks were affected by white syndrome in the reef, and that was after one year about 6% of the stock. Um, if you don't intervene. On the other hand, our Acropora stock uh, was affected by white syndrome only in the lagoon, not in the reef. Uh, however, that was an astonishing 88% of our stock. So um, some blown out there. Um, mitigation we tried afterwards. Um, so we did find that it did work fairly well for uh, Postlopora stock. So by simply just removing the disease fragments. However, there was no chance of uh, saving any of the acropora with that method. So definitely more research needs to be done uh, in that in that direction. Overall, the location is that um, we had a significant decrease in survival due to diseases in both stocks, actually. And we can tell that because we had the twin stock um, growing in the other nursery that was not affected. So we basically had a natural control for that. And uh, in the end, we were able to uh, outplant about 90% of our Postopora stock, uh, which was very good. However, for the Acropora stock, that was a complete waste. After one year of 
monitoring, maintaining, and cleaning those corals, uh, we couldn't outplant any of these to the restoration sites because there's always the risk of uh, transplanting also the disease with the stock. So you have to uh, approach a bit more carefully there. So other challenges, of course, uh, you may imagine um, a global pandemic uh, also affects restoration. So if you want to know how to do or better not to do restoration uh, during COVID, I'd like to reference the poster presentation of my colleague uh, and the related paper, if you're interested. Last but not least, some good news. Um, the outstanding phase, which is the initial or the eventually the aim of all the nursery uh, and rearing fragments. Uh, we uh, conducted the first outplanting on a slowly uh, recovering house reef, uh, which showed very, very little natural recovery, so definitely a good candidate for our restoration. Uh, we tried with an initial 60 plus colonies, which we monitored closely over one year, uh, outplanting them to three different depths and three different transplantation patterns. After one year, we found that outstanding success was uh, 72%. So this is above um, most of the sites of visitor. And we also found some depth patterns, for example, colony growth and uh, drupella predation decreased as we transplanted called deeper. However, core rubble intact, so that's mainly covering um, the transplant uh, increase with depth. Um, the ecological benefits, which is eventually what we are looking for when we're trying to restore a house reef, uh, were, however, quite evident. So um, in our restoration plots, when we compared them to the control plots, we found um, a higher and more diverse fish community, as well as increased natural cover already after one year. Um, so these are really encouraging results. So um, with the main transportation uh, action uh, had, we basically took from this study that uh, we should prioritize outplanting to stable substrate rather than going for any specific patterns uh, because coral rubber really uh, was an issue. Um, and we should go for the shallow reef slope. So we transplanted the remaining about 1,000 colonies to around about six meters. Um, and another important method to take away was really to continue maintenance after outplanting um, to make sure that your um, colonies are attached and that you are really um, moving the rubble away from that. So uh, finally, some take home messages. Um, restoration projects uh, do require scientifically validated and regionally tested best practices in order to be most efficient. Our evaluation of coral gardening in the Maldives um, shows that this kind of technique is suitable for upscaling restoration efforts. And our results at least exceeded the literature benchmarks for the nursery phase as well as for the outstanding phase. Factors to keep in mind are really um, local habitat conditions. Not all um, lagoons are alike, and you really need to pay attention to disease outbreaks and try to manage them um, by including genetic diversity, but also keeping close eye on any potentially disease fragments and understanding uh, which species and habitats are more prone to disease. Finally, um, planning is the key to any monitoring and many maintenance uh, activities, so it's well advised to plan ahead. Together with the, the protocol that my colleague presented, we hope to encourage scaled up restoration efforts for the Maldives because Really, we have no time to waste. So these are just the publications. If you're interested to read deeper into the topic, and I'd like to thank everyone for their attention, as well as the many people that were involved in conducting these studies. Thank you.